Hey everyone, it's Michelle Bell. Welcome to our training tonight on sponsoring tips. I hope you have a notebook in front of you and a pen because we are going to go over a ton of information. I have compiled a lot of information in this call and you'll definitely want to take some notes. So I highly recommend you go grab a pen if you don't have one. Okay. Um, let's get going here. Oh, hi. <laughs> Let me go back to my PowerPoint. We're still figuring this thing out. There we go. Okay, perfect. So you just saw me with my glasses on in my computer mode. Um, I'm a Black Status presenter with Unique. Um, I joined October 2013, and I... I I firstly sponsored 124 um, presenters, so in just a little bit over a year. Um, I have done and been doing direct sales since 2007, so I do have some previous experience with another company, um, but I'm excited to share some tips I've gotten from, you know, all my experience with direct sales and also with Unique. So one thing I wanted to go over first is, you know, why sponsor, right? <laughs> um, why is it important to sponsor? Well, well, We'll talk about that in a second. Um, the other things we're going to go over is how to sponsor on the go, how to sponsor from your customers, online parties, events, social media, how to tweak your closing so you're more efficient and more successful with sponsoring, and then a little bit about attraction marketing and why that's important. So let's talk about why we sponsor, okay? So in direct sales, you really make money doing two activities, right? The first is selling, and the second is building a team. Okay, those are the two main ways that you make money with direct sales. So if you're selling, that starts over every month, right? Every month, every single person in the company, every single person in any direct sales company starts over at zero dollars, okay? Zero dollars. And then you work each month to add those sales to your, your, um, your business, to add those customers, to share the product, right? And your excitement of the product, okay? So you're going to get paid commission, but that starts over every month. Whereas if you are building a team, you get paid on the activities that other people are doing on your team. So guess what? In selling, let's say you decide to take a month off. Hey, are you going to get paid? <laughs> no, because you didn't sell anything that month. But with a team, if somebody takes a month off, you still have several other presenters, possibly hundreds of presenters or thousands of presenters, depending on how large your team is, that are working and doing activity that you're going to get paid on. So if someone takes a month off, it doesn't really affect your business because you have others that you've sponsored and built, okay? You could even take a month off, almost, say almost, but you could not work as hard one month and still get paid the same as a month you're working really hard if you've built up your business. So that can be the power of sponsoring. And just to give you an idea of the type of commissions you can make in Unique, now if you're a yellow status presenter, you make 25% commission, okay? So that means if you sell 1,000 PRS, you're gonna make $250. That's guaranteed money that's coming your way, okay? Sell 2,000, you'll make $500 in commission. Sell 5,000, you'll make 1,250 in commissions, okay? That's, that's a guarantee. You go do that work, you're gonna get paid for it, okay? But check this out. Okay, once you become a leader with Unique and you work and you build other leaders, there's a huge range of income that you earn, not off your commissions, but just off your team, just off your team. So your commissions are going to be extra on top of that. We currently have people earning anywhere from a low of $500 all the way up to $12,000 and plus each month. Pretty awesome, huh? Okay, so team building brings you residual income. That's why it's important to sponsor. Okay, the other reason... You want to sponsor and continue sponsoring. So if you come into this business and you think, I'm going to sponsor five total rock stars, and they're going to take off, and they're going to build and build and build, and it'll continue to build, and this business is going to be awesome, okay? Why do I need to sponsor after that? I've already sponsored my rock stars. Well, it definitely depends on your income goals, right? If you have a smaller income goal, maybe you don't need a sponsor. <laughs> but if you have a larger income goal, you're definitely going to want to continue to sponsor. And there's statistics with the direct sales. So it's a rule of thirds. A third of those you sponsor do nothing. Yes, I said that. Nothing. A third of those you sponsor do something. And a third of those you sponsor do everything. Okay? They work the business. They run with it. They go. All right? So if you sponsor three people, and they all don't work, okay? That means you've sponsored the third that's not gonna work out of the 10 that you need to sponsor, 
okay? So I see a lot of new presenters come in and they sponsor, 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 and then those people maybe just don't, don't go, they don't work, they don't grow. Well, you just haven't found your rock stars yet. You just need to keep sponsoring until you find those rock stars, okay? Now that doesn't mean you should sponsor people and just say, okay, go, show me if you're the rock star or not, okay? There's a lot of people that are kind of in the middle, and if you mentor and help them and work with them, they can become your rock stars, okay? So I want you to think of this. I, I heard this um, analogy a few years ago, and I really, really liked it, and this is so, so true, okay? I want you to think of yourself in a big stadium, a huge stadium, okay? And some you're with a group of people, and your little tour guide there says, okay, under one of these seats is a million dollars. Go. <laughs> okay? For sure. Like, he's not joking around. Under one of the seats, there's a little bag. It's taped. million dollars. Go. Hey, how long would you search under those seats if you knew that million dollars was there? If you knew it was there. Okay? And I know not everyone's in this business for a million dollars, but this is, this is how direct sales works. Okay? So you're going to flip over one seat. Okay, it's not there. Flip over another seat. It's not there. Flip over another seat. It's not there. I'll tell you, there's a few different kinds of people that enter direct sales. There's some that flip over five seats and they say, oh my gosh, this is, he's lying. It's not here. This is too hard work. It's not worth it. I'm out of here. Okay, there's people that will flip over almost all the seats and then they'll, oh, no, I'm done. And whereas the next seat would have been that million dollars. Okay, so with this business, you're not really trying to, I guess, sell people on the business, okay? You're not trying to convince them to do the business. You're trying to find those that want it and those that are willing to work work for it. And those can be literally million dollars. I mean, that can bring million dollars into you. It can bring a ton of income into you. I know um, my sponsor, Nicole Smith, she has, I mean, she has several elites now, I think about 19. But the majority of her team is still under about three people. That's the majority of her team. The majority of my team is under three people, okay? I would say three quarters of my team are under three people that I personally sponsored. So you're looking for those gold, for that million dollars under the seat. Now, before we keep going on, I want to tell you about this amazing presenter special that we have with Unique, and you definitely want to use this to your advantage, okay? So we have a new presenter signed up special. Sometimes, you know, it might be the one thing that just pushes someone over to the other side of joining, right? Maybe they're on the fence, and that's the one thing that's going to be like, okay, I'll do it this month instead of next month. So when anyone joins between January 14th, that's today, and February 14th, they're going to receive $14 in Y cash and 1400 incentive points toward Jam the Jamaica cruise. That can be really, really huge for someone, okay? We don't do a lot of presenter incentives, right? So we're going to use this to our advantage, and I'll talk about that tonight and how you can use that, okay? But let's go ahead and get started. So I want you to think of um, why people join direct sales and why someone would join a company like Unique. Immediately, most people think, well, they want to earn money. So I'm going to talk about money. I'm going to talk about how much money they can earn with this business because it's a business and you make money, okay? I'm going to tell you not everybody joins a direct sales company to make money. Yes, that might be part of it, but that might be not, you know, that might not even be the main reason why they do that. A lot of people join just for the fun of it, okay? Maybe they're, you know, bored at home. Maybe their relationship with their spouse isn't so hot. Maybe they need, you know, their kids are grown or maybe they have five kids at home and they're like, going nuts because they only talk to two-year-olds all day, okay? Fun and friendship are a huge part of why people join a direct sales company. Maybe they love to take trips. You know, I went on my first cruise with a direct sales company. I'd never been on a cruise before. I've gotten to visit places I've never been before. That is a huge reason I continue to do direct sales. What about the product? They love the product and, hey, have fun, share it with friends. Okay, and then, of course, the cash, the money, that could be a big part of it too, or recognition. Recognition is a huge reason people join and stay with direct sales. I, I don't know about you, but I don't get a lot of recognition at home. I mean, I love my husband. I know he loves me, but I could clean the house and he might not even notice, right? I don't get a plaque or anything like that. So recognition and then, you know, being part of something that's bigger than themselves, having something that's their own. That's a huge part for me. 
I want to, you know, be able to tell people, hey, I built this. This was mine. I, you know, I grew it from nothing and look at what it's done. I want that, uh, that recognition. I don't know if that's selfish or not, but it's just how it is. Okay. So let's talk with how, how the really core that's going to help you sponsor more. Okay. It's really about your belief and how you feel about this business and about yourself and about sponsoring. Okay. And it all starts with being intentional. So what I mean by intentional is every week, every day, you're thinking about how you're going to share the products and how you're going to share the business. Now, I totally get it. Some people listening on this call, well, let's be honest. If you're listening on this call, I'm assuming you're a business builder because you took the time to get on this call and listen. So I'm assuming those that are doing this as a hobby aren't really on the call, right? We posted the link, we shared it, but they didn't get on, they're not listening, okay? So I'm gonna assume those of you really wanna build a business, you really wanna earn money, okay? So you need to be thinking about unique. I mean, not obsessing or anything, but all the time, right? Every day, you're doing something towards your business, every single day, okay? I mean, you can take Sundays off, you know, do a family day, do a church day, spiritual day, take a day off, that's good for you, you take a break, go do something else. But you've got to be really intentional about this business. Your goal needs to be to sponsor every single month, every single month, okay? And I want you to really think about this, okay? So we're not in a class. You don't raise your hand. No one's judging you or anything like that. But I want you to really look inside. How do you feel about the opportunity? Do you feel it's a good opportunity? Do you feel like people would benefit from being part of this business, okay? Or do you feel like maybe they really wouldn't? maybe they wouldn't be successful at this okay how do you feel and then think about how do you feel others feel about the opportunity okay that's a tricky one right you might feel this is a super awesome opportunity but you might worry that other people don't think that way maybe they look down on direct sales you know i i still struggle with this a little bit i'll admit you know i look at people that have professional careers and it crosses my mind there's no way they'd be interested in this Okay, that has nothing to do with them. That's my, that's something wrong with my belief, my understanding, my, uh, you know, experiences. Okay, I'm prejudging them. But you know what? I have a dentist on my team in the UK and she's fabulous and I love talking to her. And she helps to remind me that, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what someone currently did or does or what profession they are. They might be interested. You just never know, okay? And this is so true, okay? If you go through this business and you don't think you can bring people into your team, you don't think you can sponsor, and you don't think you can promote, guess what? You won't. <laughs> it's just how it's going to be. You really have to believe you can do it. And you can do it. That's the thing. You can totally do this. You got to have confidence, okay? People are attracted to confidence. Be confident at what you have to offer because you have something amazing, right? And conquer your fear. So everybody has fears. I have fears, okay? Having fears is not a bad thing. Everybody has fears. It's what you do with that feeling, right? I might be at Target and I might see a lady there and think, oh my gosh, I should totally go talk to her and then have this fear come over me of what am I going to say? What is she going to say? Is she going to think I'm dumb? Is she going to think I'm pushy? You know, all these outside fears that I'm projecting on myself, which aren't even, I mean, I'm just imagining them, right? We don't even know what she's thinking, but I'm putting all those fears on me. Well, guess what? It's okay to have those fears. It's what you do with that. You just got to conquer that and say, you know what? put that away. My reason for doing this business is bigger than my fear. Okay. And then remember, it's not about you. So again, you are at target, you see somebody, you don't know anything about her. Okay. You don't know if she just got laid off of her job that week. You don't know if her and her husband are, you know, having some marital issues and she wants to get a divorce or he wants to get a divorce. You don't know if maybe they're super strapped for cash. You know, you don't know if she used to work a full-time job and she quit to stay home with her kids. You don't know anything about her. So when you're talking to people about the business, just keep an open mind and don't make it about you. You're blessing someone else's life, okay? If you make it about you and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I got a sponsor and I want to earn this trip and please join my team so you can help me earn this incentive, okay, people are not attracted to that. They're just not. Everybody is selfish. They're only interested in them. So you have to show them how this business is going to benefit them and how they can do it, okay? 
Now I'm going to give you, I'm a numbers person, I have to admit, and I really like knowing numbers because I feel like I have some control, right? If I know statistics, then I can kind of manage my activity around that. So statistically in direct sales, it takes 10 business conversations to have somebody join your business, your team. 10. Okay, that's statistics and direct sales. <laughs> now, you might be a little above or might be a little below that. Let's say you're brand new. So it might take more, a little bit more than 10. You can kind of find out your numbers by just keeping track of how many people you talk to. And these are business conversations. So not just product conversations, but actually talking something about the business. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I do this online makeup business. Yeah, did you know you could actually do this too? You know, introducing the business, not just the product. So if you are struggling with sponsoring, I want you to take a realistic look at how many people you talk to. How many people did you talk to this week? How many people did you talk to last week? If you talk to 10 people all month, you may sponsor one person, okay? So if your goal is to promote and to grow, one person a month is not going to do it. I'm going to just be honest with you. It's not going to do it, okay? You need to aim for three, a minimum of three people every month to be a business builder, okay? Because remember, one out of three is going to, is going to bail on you. One's going to be okay, and one's going to be really strong. So every month, you want to bring in a strong person for your team. And I love this quote by Sarah Robbins. Five contacts a day keeps the leads coming your way. So I get this question all the time. How do I meet people? How do I... You know, I want to talk, I want to have business conversations, but I don't know who to talk to, okay? You just got to open your mouth and start talking to people, okay? Get out of your house. You're not a hermit. <laughs> Get out of your house sometimes. I mean, it, we can do a lot online that's really amazing with Unique, but I bet there's people on your street that have never heard of Unique, okay? Don't let other people sponsor people down the street from you. You need to be that person that sponsors people down the street from you, okay? And Think about it this way. I mean, if someone said, hey, I'm going to give you 10 bucks for every business conversation you make, do you think you would have a lot more conversations? Yeah, you betcha. Okay, 100 bucks every 10 people I talk to, dude, I'm out the door and I'm going to talk to people. Okay, pretend like that's reality because guess what? Those conversations that you have, they are going to turn into money in the future. You're investing in your future with this business. Okay, direct sales is, is very similar to any new business that you start. Most people don't start businesses, so they don't have anything to compare it to. Most people, when they come into direct sales, they're comparing it to a retail job where I get paid per hour, you know, a management job, uh, whatever. Most jobs are paid per hour. Most people haven't started a business before. Because if you had started a business before, you would know it's uphill work when you start a new business. You don't always make money right at the beginning. Direct sales is going to be very similar, right? You're going to make money off your sales, okay? If you want to make money, you can make money right from the very beginning. You can make good money from the beginning. But the really, really good income comes in the long run, and it takes a little bit of work to get to that, okay? We're going to skip that. Okay, so where are you going to meet people, okay? Where? So Michelle tells me I have to go find people to talk to. <laughs> where am I going to find these people to talk to? Are they going to come to me? They're not going to come to you. you got to go to them, okay? Think about where you are, where you are during the week. What things are you involved in, okay? What activities are your kids involved in? My kids are in gymnastics and music lessons, okay? So I have opportunities to talk to people. What hobbies do you do? Do you run? Do you, you know, are you, do you paint? What kind of things are you involved in? Do you ever go shopping, okay? If you are doing the Walmart, you know, shopping to go, stop it. <laughs> um, I don't shop at Walmart, so I could say a bunch of stuff about that, but you're missing opportunities to get out of your house, okay? Running errands. Well, do you go through the drive-thru? Do you, at the bank, do you go through the drive-thru or do you walk into the bank? Well, how many conversations are you missing out on by trying to, you know, get there faster and be more convenient? Okay, you're missing opportunities, right? Do you work? Who do you work with? Who do they work with? Who do they know? College, school? I mean, girls' night out. If you don't go to a girls' night out, why don't you start one? Why don't you start a bunco group? You know, if you aren't part of a mom's group, search for one. Join one. Um, are you part of the PTA? Do you know people part of the PTA? School groups, community. Go to the library and just start talking to people. Go to the mall, okay? You don't have to pay to go to places. <laughs> go to the mall with your kids. Go to the play area. Sit down and start having a conversation with somebody, okay? And then we get to the question, okay, what do I say? Here I'm sitting next to a stranger. 
they don't know me, I don't know them. What do I say? Okay, I'm the perfect example of this. Before direct sales, I would sit as far away from any other mom as possible, okay? I do not like starting conversations. It's very hard for me. It takes an incredible amount of energy for me to start a conversation with somebody. I mean, incredible amount of energy. I'm a very, um, just a naturally quiet person, okay? So when I go out, again, I have to be intentional. Instead of sitting by myself, I think, you know what? I'm going to open up opportunities for me and who knows what's gonna come from it. So I'm gonna sit next to somebody. And how do I start a conversation? You just start asking questions. Ask them questions. If I have, I have little kids, so often when I'm with someone else, I'll ask them about their kids. How old are your kids? Oh, what school do they go to? Oh, what activities are they involved in? Oh, you know, I start asking them questions. Oh, what do you do? Chances are you start asking them questions, they'll start asking you questions back. And if they don't, you know, maybe kind of work some things in. If unique comes up, awesome. Awesome. We'll talk about ways you can sneak it in. If it doesn't come up, you know what? At the end, you can just say something like, my gosh, it was so great talking with you. I, you know, I totally forgot I was going to share this with you, but oh, you're leaving and I, I got to run. But, you know, here's my card. I, I do this really awesome makeup business. You're so super friendly. You know, if you're not interested, maybe you know someone that is. Okay, you can always do that at the very end. Or if you're going to see him again, you know, I used, I used to take my kids to dance and I knew I would see people for like every week for three months. So I don't always talk about the business right away. I start to get to know them. And then maybe week three, I might say something about, yeah, you know, I'm putting, or I'll bring samples with me that I'm putting together, you know, just things like that. Okay. Now it's really good idea to get your 30 second commercial perfected. Okay. So what does that mean? When someone asks you what you do, you need to know right off the tip of your tongue what you're going to say. Now, I used to say something like, oh, yeah, I sell this really awesome mascara. And I changed it a little bit to say something more like, I, I sell the world's best mascara online, and I help other women create their own online businesses. I like saying something like that because... I'm also talking about, I'm talking about the products, but I'm also talking about the business. And I just kind of tweak it in there. Because I, I think that would be interesting if someone said to me, oh, I help women create online businesses. I'd be like, oh, that's cool. How does that work? You know? So trying to think of something to say that they're going to ask more questions about, okay? And if you've got your one eye on and your one eye off, right? Your 3D lash, one eye, one eye off on this eye, you can ask questions to start getting that interaction, Okay. Or even before you say what you do, just point to your eye and say, okay, well, before I tell you what I do, tell me if you can tell a difference, which eye looks better. A, and get them, you know, interacting with you right away. But there's all sorts of training and tips online about perfecting your 30-second commercial. Figure out what you're going to say, write it out, practice it in front of a, you know, video camera or your husband or whatever, and just perfect it, okay? One eye with, one eye out. Don't leave your house without it. It's going to look funky. It's going to look crazy. But you know what? It's a perfect way to draw attention to what you're doing. Okay? Even if someone hasn't brought anything up, let's say you're checking out at the register at Walgreens. There's a nice lady on the other side, and she smiles at you or looks at you, and you can say, oh, you're probably looking at my crazy eyes. I'm getting ready to go to a demo, and so I have my you know super awesome 3D mascara on one eye and then my, you know, regular lame Mac mascara on the other eye just to show her the difference. Can you tell a difference? Okay. Do you see how you can just work that in there right there? Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Now you can be really subtle. Okay. Work unique into the conversation. It doesn't have to be all, oh my gosh, look at me, look at me, look at me. Okay. Um, if you're at the bank and somebody says, they, they almost always say, you know, how are you doing today? How's your day going? Okay, instead of just saying good or okay or great, say something like this. Oh my gosh, it's so and so awesome. I just got back from a makeup demo. Or, oh my gosh, it's going so great. I, I have this online makeup business and it's just taking off. I'm so excited. Okay, I mean, it just you're just sparking conversation, right? <laughs> you're just sparking conversation. If you're getting ready to go on the incentive trip, you're right, you're working toward that. Um, go to, you know, go buy a swimsuit, go sunglass shopping. Okay. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm earning this trip with my company. I'm so excited. So I need to buy some sunglasses. Okay. Just work it into the conversation. Now, of course, if it makes sense, don't, I mean, don't be so super awkward <laughs> and just say, oh yeah, I do unique. Did I tell you I do unique? <laughs> okay. Compliment somebody on their eyes, on their outfit, you know, just think of things about them. Okay. That you can talk about. 
Now, if you're having conversations with somebody, you're able to have you know a little bit more time. Really look for green signals. Okay, these are signals that people are sh information they're sharing with you that could give you a connection to introduce the business. Okay, so if you're talking with somebody and they're talking about their job or they're stressed about money, they just lost their job, they're looking for work, and they are asking about the products that you offer, or maybe they're asking you, you know, well, how do you, how does Unique work? Okay, they're really saying, tell me more about the business. I'm a little curious. Or if they ask you, you know, how do you like doing Unique? How do you like this business? I mean, that is a huge green flag. I would be like inside, be like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. She wants to know more about the business. Okay. I one time, and this is for my previous business, but I was at the grocery store and I have to be honest, I'm not the best at talking to people at the grocery store. Grocery shopping is stressful for me. I'm with my kids almost all the time and I just want to like get in and get out. <laughs> so I do not always talk to everybody at the grocery store, but I was at the deli counter one time and there was this young lady on the other side and you know, I'm thinking she was like college age and I'm thinking, okay, you know, how fun would it be to work in a grocery store and the deli counter? you know, college age. And so I just kind of asked her, you know, Hey, you know, do you like working here? How long have you worked here for? And she was like, yeah, you know, I'm just kind of doing this till I get something else. And the way she was talking about, it, I could just tell she was not, you know, in her dream job. So I just said, you know, I mean, you're super friendly and I don't know if this is something you're looking for, but I'm actually, you know, I help people start businesses and if you're interested, you know, let me know. And then what I did is I invited her to an upcoming event that we were doing with our our um, team, our business, and she ended up joining. So if somebody, you know, ask people about what they're doing and if they're enjoying what they're doing, if that's, you know, meeting all their dreams, their goals that they have for themselves. And if it's not, you know, talk about how you could be a solution for that. Okay. Now, if you are not prepared, you're not going to be as likely to start sharing because you're not going to feel as confident, right? So before you leave your house, you need to make sure you have some things, you know, have business cards, have lashes for cash and carry. I always have one set that's open. So my own set, I call it my demo set. Okay. So I can pull it out and show people how it works. And then I always have two, maybe even three wrapped, you know, sets to sell. Okay. Always, always, always. Um, you can also have a notebook to write leads down. So if you're giving people your information, like a business card, and you're not getting their information back in return, okay, you need to stop doing that <laughs> because nobody will call you back. If you hand out business cards, you will never hear back from them again. You might. It's really, really rare. But if that's the way that you're trying to build your business, it's going to be very, very hard for you to build a business that way. It's not very efficient. So anytime you give your card out, make sure you get their information in return. And it's really simple. Just say, let's exchange information. Let me grab your phone number so I can text you. Let me grab your email address. Are you on Facebook? Why don't you add me as a friend on Facebook? Okay. You have to get their information. That's super, super important. And then keep track of how many people you talk to. So if your goal is to talk to five people a day, and I'll tell you, I did this in my, in my business. So, um, in my previous company, I was challenged to either have three conversations a day or five conversations a day. And I like a challenge. And so I, I thought to myself, well, I'm going to do the five. I'm going to do five conversations a day. Okay. So I just put five business cards in my pocket, in my purse, whatever. And I made sure I had five conversations a day. And I was serious about this goal. So if it got to eight o'clock at night and I had not had my five conversations and I, this was like before Facebook, I think I didn't even know about Facebook. This is years ago. <laughs> So this is like in-person conversations. I was finding five people every day to talk to or pass, you know, people to call on the phone, those kind of things. Eight o'clock at night, if I had not had my five conversations, you know what? Tell my husband, hey, I got to run over to Walgreens. I got to get something. Even if I didn't buy anything, I would walk down you know, the halls, the, the aisles of the store. That's how serious I was about, you know, doing that challenge and meeting that. Okay, so five business card, put five bangle bracelets on one side, and every time you talk to someone, switch it to the other side. Put five coins in your pocket, switch them to the other side every time you talk to somebody. Okay, keep track of how many people you talk to. And if you're serious about making this a business, you're serious about making this, you know, real and really successful, you'll meet those, those goals that you have every day. Okay, five people a day will change your business in just I mean, two weeks, literally. When I did that challenge, five people a day, I sponsored the most people I'd ever sponsored in any month. It just happened because of I was talking to more people. It works, I promise. And I would challenge you if you're listening to that. If you are stuck, 
try it. And I'd love to hear your results because it'll be amazing, okay? Keep an ongoing prospect list. So I have to admit, I'm a very much a computer person, but I really stink at using computers to help me follow up people. I, I really like a notebook. I write the names down. I cross them off. I keep it with me if I'm in traffic, you know, if I'm waiting for my kids at school or whatever, I can do calls with my notebook. So keep an ongoing prospect list. This is what leaders, those that are successful with sponsoring, this is what they do. They have a list of those that are on their radar, I guess I would say. Those that they're going to approach about the business. And those that they've talked to months before, okay, that they're going to follow up with. And they'll write down a day and they'll write on their calendar, okay, I'm gonna, on Tuesday, February 5th, I'm going to follow up with this person. So they keep an ongoing list. They're always continually adding it adding to it. So when I, when I have a month where I have a big goal, like this month I have a big goal, I want to sponsor 15 people this month. So I have a list of who I am, you know, who I'm going to contact, who I've already contacted, who's contacted me thinking about signing up, who I'm going to follow up with, okay, add to it. And remember, there is timing. Timing is a big important thing. So I found out about Unique in pretty much right after Unique launched, November 2012. It's kind of embarrassing to say um, because I didn't join until October 2013. So literally like 11 months. I mean, and, and, but I wasn't ready. And I have to admit, if I had joined um, right when Unique launched, I don't think I would have been as successful because I wasn't ready to leave my previous business and really you know, run with this business. And so when I made that decision, I mean, I just, I ran with Unique. And that was all I did. So keep in mind that timing is sometimes really important. I've had people that have joined me months and months and months after we first met or months after they first purchased the product. Sometimes they need to think about it. Sometimes they're not sure. Or sometimes they want to see how other people react to the product. You just never know. So when you follow up with somebody, here's what you want to do. Don't just say, hey, I'll check with you later. Okay. Ask specifically, when, can I, when would be a good time to you know, contact you again or call you back? Because you might be thinking, oh, you know, I'll contact them in five, six months. And they might be thinking, I just need to get past this week or next week. Call me in two weeks, okay? And I'll tell you what, people really appreciate you being persistent and keeping your word and calling them when you say you're going to. That's a huge, huge, huge thing. So when someone asks you to follow up with them, make sure you do it. Get your calendar out, write it in, phone reminders, whatever is going to work for you, okay? Now think of people you already know. If you haven't made a dream team list, you need to do that like tonight, tomorrow, this weekend. Okay. Make a list of, oh my gosh, these amazing people. I would love to have them on my team. And then you need to start contacting them and you need to tell them, you know what? I made a list of the people that I would love to do this business with. And you were like top on the list. You were right there at the top because you're amazing. And I, I respect you and you have these attributes. Tell them why they'd be amazing on your team. Okay, let them know you believe that they would make this business just rock. Okay, now here's the other thing I want you to do. If you're stuck at sponsoring, now some of you, maybe you've done this, but if you're stuck at sponsoring, I have a feeling you haven't done this. So if you have, we move on to the next step. But if you haven't done this already, go through Facebook, A through Z, every single contact. Have you contacted all of them? Do they know that you're unique? If they don't, you want to make sure they do. Okay, email. Look through your email contacts. Have you emailed them and let you know that you're doing this new, let them know you're doing this new amazing business? People you went to college with, high school with, your family, your cousins, aunts, uncles, you know, their kids. All right. Work. People, not maybe you don't work with them now, but you used to work with them. People you've known through church, neighbors, kids, parents, organizations. I mean, most people don't realize how many people they actually know until they start writing it down. So go through the list of people that you know. Your network is a huge asset in this type of a business. I can't even over under overemphasize that enough. Okay. Your network is huge. You need to tap into the network that you know. Okay. Huge, huge, huge. One really good tip that I got out of the networking, um, GoPro network marketing recruiting mastery event in Vegas last fall was to really work your network. Hey, it's, it's like gold to you, okay? The people with the biggest network have the biggest paychecks. And that doesn't mean you have to know or be outgoing, you know? But keep track of everybody that you meet, all your contacts. You never know when that relationship is going to come into play. You just don't. 
And my experience in Unique has totally been that. I had another previous business, and when I joined Unique, I went back to previous customers. I went back to, I mean, just back to all different people. I've lived in like, I've lived in, gosh, I don't know. We've moved like 13 times since I've been married in what, 12 years. So I have all these different places I've lived and people I've met and people I've connected with. And so I went back to a lot of those networks and I have to admit, I haven't even tapped everything out. I in fact, after just putting this PowerPoint together, I thought, oh my gosh, I need to go back and you know make sure I'm contacting everybody. But find a creative way to keep in touch. So do you have a friend in high school? Have you talked to her in years? I'm not telling you to co contact her and say, hey, you should join this business with me. But why don't you contact her and say, hey, how are you doing? You know, I haven't talked to you in a while. Are you, can we get on the phone? Hey, can we go meet for coffee or breakfast? You know, contact someone and just connect. Send out Christmas cards, okay? Facebook, message people, comment on their things that they're posting on Facebook. Find a way to stay connected. That's what I'm trying to say. So find a way to stay connected, and it's really going to help you out with this business and anything else you do in life, right? Okay? Kara Cloy does a really great call. If you haven't listened to it, I highly recommend it, but she talks about the three C's, crazy, compliment, confident. So those that you know, or even, I mean, those that you're just meaning, but you can use this word, this verbiage, okay? So you can call them up and say, and I suggest call. I really think Facebook is limited in the way that you can express emotion, okay? And really communicate, right? Facebook has its limitations there. So any, any way possible, get on a phone call, text, something better than Facebook, okay? But give them a call. Hey, oh my gosh, so you're gonna totally think I'm crazy for bringing this up. I joined this venture, I do, you know, whatever you wanna say about that, you're gonna think I'm totally crazy, but I'm doing this amazing thing, and oh my gosh, you would be fantastic at it. You were one of the first people I thought of. Give them a sincere compliment, okay? You're so social media savvy, you'd be seriously awesome at this. Or you love makeup, I mean, you would just do crazy with this. And then show them some confidence. Hey, let's do this together. I know you could do this. I'd love to help you get started. I'm going to show you how to do what I've been doing. Okay? Crazy compliment confident. Works wonders. All right. Let's talk about your customers. So your customers are a huge group for you to ask. And it's really good as you get started to get a lot of customers because that's who you're going to go back to for your hostesses and for your presenters. Okay? Go back to every single customer. Okay? And make sure you have contact information for your customers. So if you do a lot of cash and care and you're just selling out of your pocket and you're not taking information, you are wasting a huge amount of time, okay? You're losing prospective presenters and prospective hosts and future customers. Keep a book with you. Keep a receipt book. Every person you do cash and carry with, you get their phone number, you get their email, you have them like you on Facebook. You get connected to them so you can follow up with them, okay? Follow up, follow up, follow up. That's huge, huge, huge. I can't emphasize it enough, okay? <laughs> two days after they get their orders, thank them. You know, within the two days. Thank them online, email, text. Thanks so much for your order online, whatever. However they order. Okay, I like to mail out a thank you card. It's up to you. I think that gives me a little bit more, I guess, remembrance in their minds. At two weeks, contact them. How did you like the product? Okay, that's all you have to say. Hey, you just want to check, see how you like the mascara. Hey, how did you like the uh, pigments? And then see what they say, okay? If they say they liked it, all I say after that is, oh my gosh, that's so great. Love it. Have you ever thought about selling? And I don't say anything else. I just shut my mouth. <laughs> don't type. That's it. And see what they say, okay? In two months, follow up with your customers. Hey, I'd love to help you reorder. Um, we can help you get something free by hosting, or did you know we have a sign-up special with joining? Then you can add some more information there, okay? But keep it simple. Keep it simple. Don't vomit information on people. They don't need it. They don't want it, and they can't process it all, okay? We only can take, like, little information at a time as people. Keep it simple. Your hostesses, make sure you have asked every single hostess to join. I usually ask halfway through the party, hey, isn't this fun? Isn't this simple? Have you ever thought about doing this yourself? You know, if you want to join, now would be a great time because we can convert this party into your party. Okay, at the end of the party, tell them, hey, you know, did you know, had you been the presenter tonight, you would have earned, you know, $100 from the party tonight. I mean, just through Facebook. Isn't that awesome? Okay. Wasn't it fun and simple? Did you know that this is how I do the majority of my business right through online parties? 
Could you see yourself doing this? Okay, help them to see, you know, what you're doing. Okay, mention the benefits of the business during your party. So on your online parties, you don't have to advertise, hey, join my team. By the way, I hate that. Don't ever say join my team. Okay, it's icky. It's all about you. La, 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 la. Don't say that. <laughs> um, talk about the benefits of the business. Okay, when you do your first post, talks about you. Talk about how you love to, you know, stay at home or how much fun it was. Or talk about a little bit about your story, why you decided to join Unique. Okay, you're going to mention that you're a presenter and this is your business. Okay. And then somewhere in the middle of the party, talk about something kind of random about presenters. Yeah, did you know presenters save 25% off all the products? 20 to 30% off all the products. Okay, just a little, little thing there to get people thinking. Then at the end, you know, make sure you show the kit. Hey, ask me about it. And then contact those that came to the party. Ask them what they thought. And then ask for referrals. If you know somebody. Now, we can't offer incentives for people to join but you can offer something for someone to refer someone to join. Okay, do you see what I'm saying here? Okay, a referral kind of a bonus. Hey, okay. refer somebody and I have a gift for you. Okay, that's an audience, anything. Okay, about me post, we just talked about that. If you're doing events, okay, so I'm not gonna go over, I mean, it, really there's so many different circumstances where you're talking with people, we could spend like days and days on the subject, really. I'm trying to condense like eight years of direct sales experience into one hour. But if you're at an event, make sure you have a poster that talks about the business. So in case you don't have the opportunity to tell every single person, hey, this is a business, I'm looking for you know business partners, you have a poster there that maybe somebody will ask you about or even they'll think about maybe come back, okay? Have like a picture of the kit maybe. Um, but don't say join my team, okay? Icky, remember, we don't say that. We don't say join my team because that's all about us. Invest in a new business. Okay, start your business today. Something about them, okay? And I love to say this. So when you're doing events, keep this in mind. Yes, we wanna sell. That would be awesome to sell at events, okay? That's a big purpose of events. But that's not the real reason you do events. And I know you're gonna argue with me and say, well, I wanna sell, I wanna make money at events. Okay, perfect, great, that's awesome. You're really at the event to find presenters, and that's what you need to tell people. Yeah, you know, the reason I'm actually here is because we have these insanely popular products and we're actually looking for presenters that want to start their own online businesses. Do you know anybody that might be interested? Now, did you notice I don't ask them, hey, are you interested? I ask for referrals. Do you know anyone that might be interested? And why I love to do that is for two reasons. First, if I ask them if they're interested, it's kind of like, okay, awkward. <laughs> like, we have, we just met. <laughs> And you want me to tell you if I want to join a business? I don't, I don't know what to say. It's just kind of awkward. If I ask, and then they just think about themselves. So they'll just say, oh, no, I'm not interested if they're not. But if I say, do you know anyone that might be interested? Guess what? It's a cool thing that happens. You can see their eyes and their brains start thinking. They're thinking of people they know. Oh, my gosh. You know what? Actually, my sister, she might be interested in this. Oh, you know, my friend, she was just looking for something to do for work, or, you know, whatever. They're going to start thinking of other people. Whereas if you just ask them, they don't do that. So that's my cool little tip there. Okay. Ask people, ask them. If you're at an event, every single person you talk with, you need to get their contact information so you can follow up with them. I have little contact cards and it has a space at the bottom to, if you're interested in becoming a presenter, interested in hosting, interested in contacts, okay? And then you need to follow up when you're, with your events. If you don't follow up after you're missing, again, a huge opportunity. You may have awesome sales at your events, but if you have people that you follow up with afterward to become a presenter or to host a party, it's gonna open up your business to so many more possibilities, so many more possibilities. Follow up within 48 hours. If you're doing an event on a Saturday, send out an email that night. Hey, I met you at so-and-so, da 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 It'll make an impression, people will remember you better. Okay, if you follow up in two weeks, they're not gonna remember who you are, where they met you at, what they bought, nothing. <laughs> okay, it's just not gonna happen. So 48 hours. Okay, and those that say they were interested in becoming a presenter, even on that card, you know, I like to, t if we have time in person sometimes, I know you're rushed, but if you're in person, I like to set up a time. Hey, you know, I'd love to set up a time to, you know, talk with you a little bit more. How does Tuesday work for you? What's a good time? Okay, and I'm gonna write it down on the card, and then guess what? I'm gonna write it down on something that I can give to them. It's like, great, we've got an appointment for Tuesday at eight o'clock. I'll be giving you a call. 
make sure you, you know, go and you can joke around now, <laughs> you know, make sure you go ahead and answer when I call and don't just, you know, scan my phone number and not pick up. Okay. Kind of be joking around with them, but follow up. That's huge. All right. Let's move on to social media because this has been really, really big for me. I have to say, I think about a third of the people I sponsored all come from YouTube. Okay. That's a big number. So why does YouTube work? Well, here's an interesting thing that I noticed early on. When I have people come to me to purchase, I would that I didn't know. So I'd have someone purchase off my website that I didn't know, I or they found me on Facebook and I didn't know them. I would usually ask them how they found out about me or unique or whatever. And this is what I would find out. Oh yeah, I saw it on Twitter, I saw it on Pinterest, I saw it on Instagram, and then I went to YouTube to see what it was about. Okay, videos are the future of information okay it just is people get their information from videos they don't read anymore as much there's some statistic I heard at that event in Vegas about how people are more likely to watch a 30 minute video than read like three paragraphs okay a 30 minute video three paragraphs if you don't believe that go onto Facebook and see how long it takes you before you're tempted to watch a video of something silly and funny versus clicking on read more and reading a whole paragraph okay it's totally true what YouTube does is it creates attraction marketing. So you put it out there once, and then people find it and they come to you. But here's the key. You have to create value. So if you're always selling, selling, selling something that's not always creating value, you don't have to put your website on every little thing, okay? Especially for sponsoring. When people are joining this business and they're intentional and they want someone that's going to support them and help them, they do some research. They don't just sign up with the first person that they talk to. Or I had somebody that, um, I have someone that is signing up tomorrow. She found me through YouTube and she heard about Unique from a coworker, not a presenter, someone that purchased the product. And the person that purchased didn't say, here, you know, here's my presenter. You should go to her. She just told her about the product. And then this person went on to YouTube and to Google to learn more about it. And she found me. And she felt like I would be a good fit for her. Okay? So YouTube puts you in front of a large audience of people you would never know. It's a really, really valuable tool. I don't know how I can emphasize. This is like my top secret secret here. <laughs> I'm kind of hesitant to give it away. So I'm telling you, it works. Okay? Social media, I mean, you're auditioning to be their sponsor. So why would you make a good sponsor? I have not done a lot of videos on products. I actually, that's one thing I'd like to do more of. I just did my very first flash demo. I'm embarrassed to say that, but I did. But I do a lot of training videos. I do a lot of tips. And it doesn't mean that you have to be a pro, a professional at direct sales to share a tip. If you learn something from someone else, make it your own. Don't just copy and paste, you know, make it your own and share. Hey, here's what I just learned. I'm so excited to implement this tip. Or, oh my gosh, here's the success I had today. I had to tape it and share it with you guys, okay? Share your information to the world, okay? Be a giver. Facebook, you want friends. You want friends, that's a good thing. If you're, being, if you're using your Facebook for personal use, consider that now you might want to be more business-minded, okay? So if you meet somebody, you know, out and about, you want to add them as a friend on Facebook because you want them to see your activity and what you're doing and how you're how your business is so fun and cool, okay? So connect people to you and your business page. In parties, I do a little game and I do points. Hey, if you add me as a friend or if you like my page, you get so many party points, okay? If you meet someone in person, I'm not telling you to grab their phone out of their hand, but say, hey, are you on Facebook on your phone? Here, let me have you add me as a friend. Take their phone, find you on Facebook and say, add as a friend, <laughs> okay? When you get home, you can accept their friend request, and there you've got an instant way to message them, you know, have them see what you're doing and be part of your life, okay? It definitely helps you. Stay connected to friends. Again, it's not all about selling, 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 but if you're not seeing your friends on your, you know, Facebook feed, they don't see you. So every once in a while, you need to go through and search for your friends and comment on their pictures and be interactive with them so they will actually see anything that you're posting, okay? Now, you have to be careful about how you share your business on Facebook. So don't spam your business all over your Facebook wall. You can get in trouble with Facebook and it's annoying to people. What I would highly suggest instead is to have a business page with Unique on Facebook, okay, business page that's separate from your profile, and share 
your post from your business page to your wall every once in a while. Okay, instead of posting directly to your wall. What that does is it makes more people see your business page, makes people aware that you have a business page, and then it doesn't look like you're always like posting things. You're just sharing from your business page. Okay. Now, I get this question a lot. Okay, Michelle, I have someone interested. Now, what do I say to her? What do I tell her? Okay, don't vomit information. I actually kind of, it's kind of a catch-22 question because you're asking me, okay, what can I tell her? But I'm going to tell you, don't tell her a lot, okay? Don't write three paragraphs about the business. It's a total turnoff, okay? Here's what I do. I share a little bit, one to two sentences, maybe a little bit more about my experience with Unique, how awesome it is, how amazing the company is, you know, how it's blessed my life. And then I say, hey, let's talk. What's your phone number? Okay, I try to get off Facebook, off email, and on the phone, in person, Skype, Google Hangouts, whatever, as quickly as possible. And this is from learning from mistakes. Okay, I had somebody that I was working with um, for a new country launch, and I was working with her for months. And I mean, like three, four, five months. Okay, we were mess we were Facebook messaging back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I made the mistake. We never got on a phone call. We never got on Skype. We never got on Google. It was all Facebook messages. Two weeks before the country launch, she told me she was going to sign up with somebody else. I'll tell you, it was a really rough night for me <laughs> because I had invested so much time in this person. But she connected to this other person. We had not connected. We, I hadn't, I was worried about investing that kind of, you know, relationship with somebody but we hadn't invested, so she hadn't connected to me. That was a huge mistake on my part. Don't underestimate the power of connection. So if I'm Facebook messaging someone, I'm saying, oh, this business is awesome. They don't, there's no emotion with that. But if I get them on the phone, oh, you can bet I get emotion in that phone call. Oh my gosh, this business is amazing. Let me tell you how it's supposed to be my life. They can hear me, they can get to know me, they can connect with me. They're much more likely to join if they have that connection, okay? Get off Facebook, get off email, text may be okay, get on the phone, Skype, Google, in person. That's what you need to do. And then ask them questions. Don't just vomit information. You don't know what they already know, what they don't know. Just say, well, let's start with what questions you have and then go from there, okay? Remember, you're not selling people on the opportunity. You're looking for those that are interested. Okay, I don't like to arm twist people. I have, I have a few people that, um, you know, They'll say, hey, I'm interested, or I'll say, hey, you should join, and they do, I just kind of feel like I get strung, strung along. Okay, I'm not a pushy person. I'm not, a, I'm not even really a salesperson. If you're not interested, hey, that's totally fine. You can watch me. I'm going to look for other people. Um, and actually, I didn't make a slide about this, but this is super, super important. I see this mistake all the time. Huge tip here, okay? I see this with new presenters. They'll say, okay. Yeah, I have these three people that are going to join. I'm so excited. I'm going to follow up with them. Perfect. Next month. Yeah, I'm still waiting for this person. She's still thinking about joining, da 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 da, da. Okay. Okay. So in my mind, I'm thinking, well, what, a, what else are you doing to add to your list? Okay. Sometimes people focus on the three to five friends that they have to get to join this business. Oh, my gosh, they're going to be awesome. I'm just waiting for them. I keep calling them. I keep following up with them. Okay. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Don't do this. Take, take those people. They're important. They're your friends. Okay. You think they'd be great at this? Awesome. Put them on your list and then go look for somebody else. Okay. Go look for somebody else while you're waiting for them to think about it and to, the timing to be right for them. You could have sponsored three, four, five other people. Don't sit around and wait for people to make up their mind. This is your business. Get in control of your business. And if your goal is to sponsor five people or three people or two people or 10 or 20 or 30, whatever, okay, you got to move on to the next person. So put them on your maybe later list. You're going to follow up with them in a week. And during that week, you're going to talk to 20 more people about the business. Okay. That's what you got to do. Now, I'm not going to go into this whole thing, but I will say if you search online for magic words, um, there's some really great training by a guy named Big Al. So type in YouTube, Big Al, comma, magic words. You'll get all this awesome video from him. But I will say it does make a difference in the words that you say. So think about how you're talking to people. Maybe don't say, you know, would you be interested in or I just got involved in this business. Those are kind of turnoffs, okay? Just think about the verbiage that you're saying and how people react to that and tweak a little bit of what you're saying and do 
read some books and, and learn how to approach people, how to ask in a way that people are more likely to say yes. I will tell you it does make a difference. And those that are more successful with sponsoring are probably saying slightly different words. They may not even realize it. You might be talking with someone like, I don't know how I keep sponsoring these people. Okay, they're probably using some different language. So take some time and invest in yourself, okay? But I wanna move on to this because we're getting close to the end here. So, <laughs> I really like this picture. So you get to the closing. So you had this conversation with somebody, you've talked with them, and you're like, okay, so what do you think? You wanna join? Okay, it's kind of awkward. Most of the time, people that are new presenters or new distributors get to that closing point and then they say, great, well, let me know what you think or great, we'll talk later and they don't, they just leave it open. They have somebody that is maybe ready to join and they just say, okay, well, we'll talk later. Okay, we'll see you later, bye. Okay, don't do that. This is what I love to do. When I get to that closing moment, we've talked about the products, the business, or whatever, I've answered questions for her, I say this, and it works amazingly well. Okay, so, you know, I'm just curious, on a scale of 1 to 10, where 1 is, you know, maybe hosting your own Lash Bash, and just sharing the products with your friends, and 10 is joining as a presenter, you know, where, where are you at on that scale? I let them tell me where they're at, okay? If they say a 10, I mean, we're signing up at night, I'm walking them through, and they'll tell you, oh, no, I'm ready, let's get going. If they say a 2 or a 3, they're probably really not interested. So I'm gonna help them set up a Lash Bash, an online party, get them sharing the products with their friends. If they say anything above six, okay, they are wanting to join, they're interested, but they have some concerns, and they need your help to overcome that. Okay, so that's what your job is, is to overcome that. So you might say something like, okay, so you set a seven. So that means there might there must be some concerns that you have, or maybe some things we haven't gone over. Let's, let's talk about that. What, what kind of concerns do you have? Okay, your husband, you need to talk it over with your husband. Okay, so what kind of concerns do you think he'll have so I can give you some information to take back to your husband to, you know, really get him informed? Why don't we set up a time? You know, you and your husband and I, we can get on a call. I know usually husbands like to know about the business side of things. You know, why don't we get on a call with my sponsor? She can explain more about it with you. Okay, three-way calls are really, really helpful for this closing part. It can help you a lot. Okay, let's talk about attraction. Positive energy attracts. It's so, so true. Think about the people you know that are positive. Don't you want to just be around them? Okay, so you need to be that kind of a person, all right? Facebook rules, okay? And I'm, I'm sorry I have to say this, but it's totally true. I have to say this. If you want to be positive and you want people to be attracted to you, you cannot have negativity on Facebook, okay? No more negativity. Don't talk about how your life sucks and it's so bad and your job and I'm overweight and da-da-da and my kids are mean and my husband ignores me. You, you'd be surprised how much I see that. No subtle gossiping. What does that mean? Okay? Don't mention something on Facebook that's you know someone else. You're talking really about someone else, but the Facebook world doesn't know who you're talking about, but they can tell you're talking about someone. It's like when you say something like, man, people just don't know when to stop, okay? Or, gosh, I wish people would be a little kinder, okay? You're talking about somebody. You're complaining, really, right? We just don't know the person you're talking about. It doesn't look good. It looks really bad, and it's a turnoff, okay? Don't flip-flop between companies. It's a huge turnoff, right? People are not going to trust you. I see some people that have one product they're talking about one month, three months later they're selling another product, three months later they're selling another product. Am I ever gonna buy from that person? Probably not likely. Am I ever gonna join that person? Definitely not, because she has no loyalty. I don't know who, what company she's promoting now, what company she's promoting then. Don't be a flip flopper. Pick a company, pick a product you love, and work it, okay? Be successful. Don't have profanity. I've actually had to unfriend people on my team Okay, it's probably not you because you're on this call. <laughs> but I don't want to see that on my Facebook page. I don't swear. I don't want to see it, okay? I don't want to see nudity. I don't want to see obscenity. I don't want it, okay? People don't want it. I don't want it. Demonstrate success. Talk about your page, how fun it was to go to a meeting, okay? You don't have to be selling, selling, selling unique. Hey, take a picture of the beach. Here's my office for the day or the park or the library or whatever. Don't spam. I really don't think it's... I mean, you can talk about the product without saying, buy it from me, buy it from me, buy it from me, and don't post your link on your profile, okay? Facebook has rules, and you can get really in trouble. You can get your, 
you know, profile totally deleted. You can get locked in Facebook jail. Okay, so be careful. They don't want to see business on your personal profile, so you have to be sneaky about it, okay? All right. Oh, my gosh. We're totally, like, at 9 o'clock. It's an hour. I'm super impressed I got through all the information so fast. I know it was a lot of information. I totally get it. So I wanted to put together a list of what you can do, like, from tonight on, right, that you can do this week to help you sponsor more, okay? First, strengthen your belief. Talk to your sponsor. Read stories of other presenters. Get inspired about what this business can do for you. That really helps me. When I joined this business, I had the idea of, okay, one to two presenters a month. That's going to be really, really good because that was really, really good in my previous business. And then I found out the top sponsor of the month before, she'd sponsored like 20 people, okay, 15 to 20 people. Well, that totally opened my horizons as the possibilities of what could be, okay? Awesome. Get courageous, okay? Pump yourself up. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, I'm awesome. I can do this. I'm a great presenter. I'm sponsoring. I love to share the business. This business is amazing. I'm going places with this, okay? Pump yourself up, right? Talk to yourself like you're already an elite leader, an exclusive leader, whatever status you want to be at. Make your list the night before what you're going to do the next day. Who are you going to talk to tomorrow? You don't know? Well, make your list the night before and you'll be way more productive the next day. Make five contacts every single day. And that's a challenge. Okay, that's a challenge. I would love to see what happens. Okay, call me up. Send me a message at the end of January. Two weeks. Okay, if you contact ten people, or excuse me, five people every day for the next two weeks. Holy cow, you're going to have an amazing business, and I want to hear about it, okay? That's a challenge. Have parties, one-on-ones, open houses. If you are doing business activities where you're in front of people, okay, not just in your house, posting on your Facebook page and posting on your Facebook wall, just hoping people are going to come to you, okay, I don't get people that way. I do not sponsor people by just posting on my wall and posting on my business page. Occasionally, I'll have someone ask me about it, but that's not... That's not how I get people. That's just like a lucky break on the side. Have things going on in your business that you're around people, that you're talking to people about the products and the business, okay? Start creating videos for YouTube. I, I'm telling you, it's huge. Make sure you have value so that other presenters are going to share your video, okay? That's my hint. Be positive, okay? People like positive people. Get on the phone when you have someone that's interested or in person. Get off Facebook, get off text, get off whatever. Instagram, get on the phone. Set up a local business event, okay? You want to build locally? Create a monthly event that you can invite people to. I mentioned the girl that I met at the deli. She didn't join there. She joined after she came to an event. People like to come to things to learn more. They like that exposure, okay? And lastly, don't give yourself an out. Don't give yourself an out. If you want to be successful with this business, well, then just go do it, okay? If you want to sponsor five people this month and you're at the end of the month and you've only sponsored one, you can do one of two things. You can say, well, oh, well, I got one week left. There's no way I can do it. It's so hard. I can't do it, okay? You're giving yourself an out. Or you can do this, and this is what leaders do. You can say, holy cow, I got a week and I still need to sponsor four people. I better I better fire it up. I better get on the phone. I better start calling as many people as I can. I better contact all my customers. I better go back and I better go out today and just talk to as many people as I can today. That's what a leader does. That's what someone that wants to succeed does. Okay? Don't give yourself an out. You are worth more than that. You can do this business. I'm telling you, people are joining Unique like left and right. We had 100,000 presenters, I believe, in September, this last September. And we've already passed 160,000 presenters. 60,000 presenters have joined Unique in the last, what, September, October, November, December, January? Five months? Holy cow! Okay? They're joining under other people. <laughs> They're joining the business, but under other people. Okay? You just got to contact them first. You got to get to them first. There is urgency in this business. We are in momentum. Okay? You want to sponsor as many people as you can in momentum. Go, 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 okay? Huge, huge, huge. I love this. This is how I work my business. Definitely it's a team thing. But I'll tell you, if it is to be, it's up to me. If I want to make this business work, I got to work. That's just how it is. And every business is the same way. 
Sometimes you'll look at a business and you think, oh, the grass is greener on that side. It's an easier business. It's a product, you know, da 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 da. Okay, makeup, what's easier than makeup? I mean, seriously, most all women in the world wear makeup or, you know, skincare products or they know somebody that does. We are in the best business to be in. Okay, we're in one of the fastest growing companies in direct sales. We have an amazing company. We have an amazing product, amazing line of products. We are in the right place. So what you got to do is you got to believe it. You got to have confidence that you can do this business and you got to be excited to share this with other people around you. Okay. No one's going to sponsor other people. And I heard this from someone else. And if this rubs somebody the wrong way, I'm really sorry, but I thought it was good. This is somebody else, another direct sales leader. And she said, you know, People make excuses all the time. They'll say, well, it was the company, it was the products, it was my sponsor, they didn't give me enough support. But if you go back to your kids and they say, well, how come you weren't successful? Are you going to blame them? Are your kids going to blame them? Or are they going to look to you? Okay. I know that's going to rub some people the wrong way. Sorry. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is if you want to do this and you want to do this right, you want to build a team. You want to share the business and you want to grow and you can do it. So go out there, share the business with those around you because I'm telling you, this company is amazing and they're going to love it. And I can't wait to see your team just grow, grow, grow. So have a wonderful night. Bye.